there was actually an article that Peter Guber wrote and I think it was for like the Harvard Review. It's not like I'm reading that all the time, yes. but I just happened to see that in researching for this um, interview. And it was about how Fidel Castro sort of finessed you, you know what story I'm referring to. Oh, I, I was on that show. Okay, yes, and, and uh, Ocean Quest Ocean or Quest, something? yes, I was the production executive, yeah. And, and what I found interesting was he talked about it's not just the story for your movie, but it's also the story that you tell other people that are either on your crew or having been denied by the film office there, he was able to tell a story to Fidel Castro, have the cameras ready, maybe I'll let you finish, I'm sorry. Well, that, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell the, the the story of Fidel Castro and Ocean Quest from my side, from the sea, from the from Doc's side where I was, because I was back in Los Angeles. So Peter sold a six-hour miniseries, documentary series, to Brandon Tartikoff, may he rest in peace, uh, called Ocean Quest, which basically was take this beautiful woman who was Miss Universe, Sean Weatherly, put her with America's answers to Jacques Cousteau, and take them to the great dive spots all over the world, and do it for a year, and and then when it was done, cut six episodes. And so we had six one hours that went on consecutive Sundays against Murder, She Wrote. And uh, it was it was sort of a big NBC event. Uh, and we went non-sweeps. So one of the things that Peter wanted to do, and by the way, he sold it because he owned a 110-foot pleasure sailboat and he wanted to figure out a way to write off his boat. So if, he, if the boat was on the show, then he could use it as a tax write-off. So, and then he, he handed it to me because I was his head of television and said, you go do it. And so uh, we were based out of Al Giddings, who was America's Jacques Cousteau and had shot like the deep and Jaws and all the underwater stuff. And so he had a big production facility in, in Berkeley, in Oakland. And so that's where we were based. And I would fly up and back during the week. And this was during the, the post. But when we were in production, um, I was just responsible for making sure that you know, the network got what they wanted and we had, you know, we had big outlines and then I introduced the production staff to the network and the network to the production staff and, and then if there was any dialogue that had to happen. And so uh, I get a phone call from the New York-based lawyers for the production company that was doing at Centerpoint Productions and they said, uh, we want to see the production schedule. Okay. So I sent in the production schedule and we're on episode three and Peter's boat with Sean and Al, the two stars, and the crew are, is motoring towards Cuba because Fidel Castro is an avid diver. The deepest point on the Atlantic is near Cuba. There was this giant trench that they wanted to send a, a rove down, and they also wanted to dive near it with Fidel. Fidel was going to go in the water with Al and Sean. And <laughs> as we get, it's motoring down in, towards international waters. I get a phone call from New York. When is this shot with Fidel Castro in Cuba? And I said, well, that's like in three days. Peter's on the boat now. And he said, turn him around. I said, what? no, I can't turn him around. I'm, I'm at 24 years old. I go, I can't turn him around. I'm like, no, I can't turn him around. There's not even any phones. Like, there's no cell phones. I'm, well, he's in a boat. He goes, you have to. He says, as soon as he hits Cuban waters, uh, the American Coast Guard is going to seize his boat and arrest them all because you have no permission from the American government to do something commercial there. And we had this embargo that was pretty fierce. And he said, they will arrest him and they will impound his boat. I went, what? He goes, why didn't anybody ask us about this? I said, well, you've seen the production schedule. How was I supposed to know that that was illegal? So he says, find them. So I find, I call somebody in Marina Del Rey. They say, well, if they have a ship to shore, you can call somebody who will ship to shore a message to them, and then they can ship to shore a message back to you. And so I got a ship to shore message. I said, stop. They anchored where they were before they entered Fidel Castro. And I went to my boss's office. So that's the guy that runs the whole production company. And I said, Tom Tannenbaum, legendary television executive. Uh, son Eric Tannenbaum produced uh, Two and a Half Man, and just a sort of a, the Barry Moores of TV executives. And I say to Tom, we have a horrible problem. <laughs> this is what's happening. I've got him to stop, but what do we do now? And he said, I don't know. There's only one person in all of Hollywood who can fix this. He says, there's a lawyer, one lawyer, who can fix problems like this named Greg Boutzer. And Greg Boutzer is this, Wyman Boutzer is this legendary. He represented Universal Studios. And when it became Universal Studios, he was in his 70s already. This was, you know, he was long since gone. And he says, sit down. And he puts on the speakerphone and he calls and he goes, he goes, Greg, yeah, what is it? He goes, it's Tom, I have this big problem. He explains the problem to him, Bowser goes, all right, 
Stay by your phone. You're going to get a phone call in the next half hour from Al Haig. Al Haig at the time was the Secretary of Defense. He goes, Tom goes, uh, okay. We wait, wait, wait. Sure enough, ring, ring, ring. Mr. Tannenbaum, yes. Al Haig, <laughs> Secretary of Defense. We went, yes. He goes, what's the hand? He tells him, he goes, okay, normally this would take a month to get through the, the Commerce Department. I will get this done in 24 hours. Tell him not to leave, but in 24 hours, I will get you the piece of paper he needs to get into Cuba, the waiver. Sure enough, 24 hours later, he came and Peter motored his way to meet with Fidel Castro. So that's, I'm sure that was not in the Harvard Review. That's my side of the story. <laughs> The, the one in the, wow, that is quite a story. And, and the one that was in the Harvard Review, and I, I didn't read the full thing, I skimmed it. I think he said that they positioned the cameras and Ms. Weatherly in her swimsuit to just yes. show sort of this, they were ready to shoot. And then he presented his side of the story and, and that the film office had denied. And it seemed like it was, because they weren't really able to tell their story of what they wanted to do. It was like this, these forms. Mm -hmm. And so he just was talking about sort of the four noble truths of storytelling and how yes. it can, it doesn't just translate to the actual screen as a screenwriter, but in terms of how you get people to work with the production. Yes. And then Fidel Castro, a lover of the ocean, kind of said, mm -hmm. you know, this belongs to everyone, go yes. ahead. And okay. Yes. <laughs> so that's the more finesse version of it. Interesting. Yes. All right. I think I like your version better. <laughs> <laughs>